we're looking at a log here from user who is that um, and just looking for for general advice uh, so I'll do what I can um, <clears throat> who is that's running a ZMR 250 uh, with the with the very good RG20 ESCs and Cobra 2206 motors so uh, excellent uh, motors and ESCs here um, if you've got flight issues, uh, it's not because of your motors or your ESCs. So we should be able to get this flying very well. Uh, your equipment is top notch. The frame is—it's a budget frame, but it's a fine frame. And uh, there's no, you know, there, it, perhaps one might argue it doesn't do as well in a crash as some of the more expensive frames. That's an issue for some debate. But as far as the geometry goes, there's no reason it can't fly really well. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing I want to look at is uh, I looked at your your config dump. Thank you for including that. We've got PID controller one, <coughs> pardon me, and um, our your pitch uh, P gain is three point eight, and your roll P gain is five point four. Um, with the weight distribution on a mini quad, it is basically always the case that pitch P gain is going to be higher, uh, sometimes as much as double uh, roll P gain, and the reason for that is that on a mini quad, the weight is more spread out along the pitch axis and more close to this the roll axis um, now because the, the mini quads frame is is long uh, and thin right so it usually requires more force to get a mini quad moving on the pitch axis than on the roll axis so regardless of what else is going on and, and we may not sort of dig all the way into this in this you know 10 minute video my hunch is that You've got something sort of something is wrong with your approach to your tuning. If you've come to a point where you've got 5.4 on roll pitch and 3.8 on P pitch, I mean, I don't know. I'm not looking at the quad and I'm not flying it, and I I certainly don't. We shouldn't assume that everything is the same everywhere. But it's usually the case that you need a more and sometimes a lot more P P gain on pitch than on roll. So um, definitely should be looking at that. Uh, and examining that further. One thing you could try doing is setting your pitch and and your roll P gain to a level where it's flyable but but soft. You know, so maybe two or three, uh, something like that, just off the top of my head. Um, and then raise one of them at a time. So raise your pitch, just your pitch. So you, you're, you've got them both low enough to the point where there is just absolutely no oscillation whatsoever. And it should even feel a little bit soft and sloshy. And then start to raise your pitch P. And in-flight adjustments are a great way to do this if you if you feel like setting that up on your controller. Um, start to raise your pitch P until you start to see oscillations and sort of make a, make a note of what pitch P is at. And then put it back down again to like two or three or wherever you settled on. And then raise roll. And that way you will separately find the oscillation point for both of those two axes. Now, if you if you have some experience, you can also do this just by looking at the black box logs. Um, but um, but that's another way to go about it. Uh, and then put put both pitch and roll at the whatever uh, you know 60 60 65 percent of the oscillation point, something like that, um, and see how that flies. And then sort of refine from there with black box. But I think if you were to take an approach like that, I would be really surprised if you didn't find that your pitch P was higher than your roll P. Okay, so let's take a look at the black box log. Um, let's take uh, let's take a look first of all just at your general questions. Um, can't get it locked in. That's a tough one. Locked in is kind of a. Uh, it's it, you really need to get that last the last ten percent of the tune to really get the just the beautiful perfect locked in feel. And it's going to be very difficult to achieve that remotely over the internet without a lot of trial and error. So we'll do what we can, but um, uh, maybe maybe won't be able to solve it all in one go. I guess um, if you've got lots of angry Pac-Mans on your motors, the answer is probably more filtering. So let's take a look uh, first of all at your gyro noise as usual. Uh, I'm going to go to the gyros first, and we'll look at the motors as well. <clears throat> and I hope that some of you who are watching my videos are a little bored with this by now. I by, by the time people get to the point where they're like, oh my god, he's looking at the gyros again, then I feel a little bit good about that because it, it means that, you know, maybe people are learning things and 
you know, I, that's my hope anyway. Um, we'll zoom all the way out. Uh, gyros don't look super noisy. Um, yep, so gyros don't look super noisy. Uh, they look okay. If we look at the motors, depending on how zoomed out, let's look at it at 100%. It does seem to be a little bit of jittering on the motors. Uh, it does make me wonder whether this is related to P gains, though, and not to the gyro, because we can see some oscillation in the gyro. That is the roll axis. We can see some oscillation in the gyro. It's a little bit of a chicken and the egg thing here, though. Is is the PID loop overtuned and causing oscillations, or uh, do you need more filtering to get rid of the oscillations that are causing the PID loop to 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 uh, oscillate? if you will. So in other words, if you have excess noise in the gyro, it can cause the PID loop to, to cause oscillations. Or if you have an overtuned PID loop, you can have it overreacting to the little bit of noise that's still coming in from the gyro causing oscillations. So which of those is the case? Well, just looking at the thickness of the gyro traces, the thickness of the gyro traces, it doesn't scream noise to me. So, I mean, if you see a truly noisy one, go back and set, uh, you know, set gyro LPF to zero and set, uh, you know, uh, sorry, set gyro cut hertz to zero, set gyro LPF to 188 and, and then look at that trace and compare it to gyro cut hertz, you know, equals 60 and you'll see the difference in, in noisiness. Um, so let's take a look then at it looks like some roll moves are going on here i can see that gyro roll is moving around i can see that gyro pitch is not doing much so let's take a look at roll uh and actually let's do <coughs> rc command sub roll and gyro sub roll my uh the way i've been liking to set it up lately and gyro plus pid roll we'll just do pid roll um yeah and let's zoom back in again okay now we're getting somewhere so right off the bat this sure looks to me like roll p is too high now i've said before that because of the way that the copter's weight distribution is there's always going to be some oscillation on roll it's really pitch can actually look pretty stable, but there's always going to be some oscillation on roll. Um, but this to me, the amount of oscillation we're seeing here, like look right here, what are we doing here? There's a little bit of a turn going on here, and not much though, nothing super extreme. And we can see a lot of oscillation here. My hunch is this is excess excess p gain on roll, and we're definitely seeing this d term is is either d is too high or there's too much noise. Um, it it doesn't look to me like there's too much noise. Here we can see some high frequency noise or being imposed over the d term, um, and I think it's common to see that at lower throttles. In my experience. It's common at lower throttles because the motors are slim, are spinning slower. They're making more low frequency noise. And so it's common to see this. So when I see something like this and we're at a low throttle like this, I don't really worry about it. I'm not going to try to tune that out. You're not going to be flying very often with the throttle that low. And when the throttle is that low, what are you doing? You're, you're descending. You're just dropping out of the sky. So your PID loop is not, is not pushing the copter around very much in those scenarios. In the scenarios when you're going to be making extreme maneuvers, the throttle is probably more likely to be middle or high. So don't worry about this exactly because the throttle is so low. This that I see here, not too worried. But if we keep looking, does the throttle ever go up? Here we go. Wow, this maybe this is like an uber powerful copter. I don't know. Uh, throttle 1200, and you're doing a you're doing a, a roll at 1200 throttle. I guess. And the throttle never went up. Well, I wish I could see the video so I had a better sense of what you're doing. But if you're hovering at 1200, I'm mighty impressed. <laughs> we can see that the magnitude of the D term is always much greater than the magnitude of the P term. Here, maybe it catches up a little bit. So it feels to me like D is too high here because D is so much bigger than P. And P is too high 
because we're seeing these oscillations just all the time, and those oscillations definitely are being reflected in the gyro. So if we see oscillations in the P term and the D term, but the gyro looks relatively smooth, then we may not worry about it. But the motors are a little jittery, the gyro is jittery, and the P term is jittery. But the gyro trace overall doesn't look noisy. So what we've got here is the gyro is feeding us clean data, the PID loop is overtuned, and it is causing the output oscillations in the motors and the gyro. So I think uh, what I would suggest here is reducing your roll P for sure, because your roll P is, is, is almost double what your pitch P is. So I mean, that's, that's probably not right. Um, maybe try a value around three and work up. Ultimately, it's looking for oscillations that tell you when your P is too high. Um, and back D back down again. What is D on roll? D roll is 35. So that's, that's potentially going to turn out to be an okay final value. But while you're tuning, lower D down to maybe 15 or 20. And then work P up looking for oscillations. Um, we're seeing here, here is that D term kick that, that has been talked about by the people over on the RC smoothing thread. That is a function of the sampling rate of the RC command input. When the RC command steps up, there is an infinite, essentially an infinite change over, over a short period of time, um, and the D term kicks. That's, that's a uh, normal part of the stepped input, and we don't need to worry about that. Likewise, the P term has these shark fins here. The RC smoothing change that Boris has made will address that. We don't need to worry about that. I'd also like to point out that in this role, notice that there is a strong impulse from the p-term, and then the p-term goes negative through the, almost the whole role, meaning that the copter has pushed too hard in the beginning to, to accelerate into the role, and is now spending nearly the whole role trying to slow down again. Um, what we would like to see in an ideal world, we can't always achieve this, but what we'd like to see in an ideal world is that P-term being relatively close to the axis in the middle of the roll. Um, this also may be a sign of excess P. <clears throat> yeah, lots of D definitely needs to come down, at least for now, and possibly more D-term filtering now that I'm looking at this section. This is really noisy for the D-term. And your gyro seems acceptably filtered. What have you got for your values here? Uh, hold on. Oh, you're using stock 1.9. You don't have any soft filters. Yikes! Huh, how did I miss that? Uh, I apologize. Um, so what's your gyro LPF? 42. Okay. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, my bad. Uh, I, I completely missed that going in. I thought there were soft filters here. There's nothing you can do about the D-term. You're out of luck. Uh, this is why we have soft filters that allow us to put a low-pass filter on the D-term. Your D-term is kind of useless. Uh, you must turn it down to around maybe 20 to 25 at most. Any higher than that, it's going to have a ton of noise. 20 to 25 is not as high as you would probably like it to be in order to get it to do its job properly, but there's nothing you can do about that because without the soft filters, you can't turn it up high enough to do its job without introducing excess noise. You simply have to reduce the D-term and accept the reduction in performance that comes uh, from the reduced D-term because the alternative is excess noise coming out of your PID loop. So definitely turn D down to about 20. Maybe turn it up as high as, as 25 or maybe probably not even any higher than that given what we're seeing here. But, but definitely turn your uh, D down and get your P tuned in right uh, so you're not seeing these crazy oscillations even on relatively minor moves. Um, that's, that's where I would start. And I, we don't have time, I'm almost out of time on my, on my video, but um, we don't have time to look at pitch, but I would guess that pitch can come up quite a lot as well. Okay, all right, hope this is helpful. Bye-bye.